Hi, this is Steve of Restless the Podcast. Before we play the third trailer to our segment, our episode of The Restless Mind, dealing with anxiety, fear, and depression, there's a few things I just wanted to say. Greg, in this third segment, this third release or trailer, if you will, speaks to the issue of the unresolved things in our lives. That for the most part, these unresolved things make up the bulk of the issues that we're struggling with. These things that we've kind of pushed under the rug and not dealt with, these hurts and pains. My oldest brother said to me not long ago, he said, Steve, when we get older, it seems like we look back and it feels like a death from a thousand little cuts. Things that people said, things that happened that as a younger person, you just kind of brush them to the side and push them under the carpet, whatever you do with them. But as an older man, I guarantee you that there's an accumulative impact from those things. So as you listen to this third trailer about unresolved issues, I would encourage you to take your time and go through it, particularly when the full segment comes out tomorrow. If you have to go through it and hit the pause button, then do it. Most in particularly this. A dear friend recently said to me, he said, Steve, consider these things that God is bringing forth in your life now that you have to deal with, that he's, he's plowing the road open so that you may be free to do his work, to be free from them. But you have to take them to the foot of the cross and leave them there. Because healing is a supernatural process that impacts our bodies physically as well. For only our Lord and God, our Father, our dear Lord Jesus, who knows us before we were yet in our mother's womb, knows us physically, knows us spiritually, and knows us emotionally, can lead you to a place of healing. But it's a lot of work. So, as I work through these things in my life, journey with me and do those very things, bring them to the foot of the cross. If you want to write us, he'd love to hear from you. But for now, as we release to you trailer number three, Unresolved Issues, think it through. And then tomorrow the full episode will come out. Listen, life hurts. It's very difficult But if we don't go deal with these unresolved issues in the way that the Bible calls us to do it, in the way that God leads us to do it, boy, what a miserable life. It hurts so deeply. Lamentation says that the Lord's love is so great that we are not consumed. But we are being consumed on a daily basis by these unresolved things. And if we don't turn them over to the Lord in a healthy way, It will eat us alive. And I know for me, it's done a lot of that. So may God bless you and keep you as we walk together in this journey of letting these things go and putting them at the foot of the cross. I jotted down a few things just for for future. A lot of the anxiety we've talked about, it is real and we haven't danced around sort of the main issues, but so much ang- so much of anxiety has to do with the fact that most of us in culture do not resolve things. Mm-hmm. When there is conflict in relationship, and of course, all of, most of life is lived in relationship, and when there is a rupture in a relationship, and that sounds like a volcano, not, that's not what I'm saying, but but, but just when there could just be, well, I'm just feeling a little distant right now, or, or I'm feeling a little irritated with my spouse or annoyed, that's that most of life is lived in the mundane. And, and so a lot of anxiety has to do with an accumulation of unresolved things that we have. Lord, the scripture calls us to keep short accounts. And that's because we have finite space in our brain. You think of our brain as an inbox that only has so much room there. And when the box starts to get full, the same way that when you go into work and you see an inbox that's full, like, oh crap, I'm so far behind. I got so much to do. And your plate is full. And so 
by keeping those short accounts helps you to keep anxiety at bay. But anyway, but that's another whole area. And, and I think most anxiety is non-clinical. And I think it's self-induced. We bring most of the anxiety that we have and the choices and decisions that we make on a regular basis. Some of those decisions we're making are implicit. We're not aware that we're making a decision, but we're, nevertheless, they're still contributing to that anxiety. That's something, that's a whole area that we didn't really get into. 